Awesome, we got uh, most heating and plumbing mechanical here. They're gonna be doing all the radiant floors, the uh, sewer, the plumbing, like all of that will be done by them. First thing they're doing is locating uh, where they're gonna be coring a hole for their septic. And then they're gonna start laying out the interior so they can get all of their underground work done so we can get our concrete poured. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit. I'll let them get started. They gotta get a, a layout done. They're gonna spend some time doing that. And then they're gonna bring that excavator to the inside and start digging all the trenches where they'll bury all of their pipes under the slab. So now that we've got all the weather logic on, we're gonna start prepping for the standing seam metal roof. Uh, in order to put the roof on, we need to have our fascia on. In order to have our fascia on, I wanna put our soffit up. We need to level a line across on our soffit, or our sub fascia, sorry, for our soffit ledger. So this is gonna get a two by nailed along this edge, and I'll show you that. And we wanna make sure that that's obviously very straight, so we're gonna make sure we have a nice snap line. And then once we have that ledger, what we need to do is block every two foot so that we can secure the soffit material um, appropriately. If your soffit is more than 12 inches, you have to add additional blocking. So we're doing a 16 inch soffit, therefore maximum spacing of two foot is what they recommend. So we're gonna get a mark on each corner and because we're at 64 foot, I don't think we can snap a 64 foot line. So we'll get a middle mark as well, always using the level so that we can make sure that we start you know, nice and level. If there's a little bit of inconsistency throughout our fascia, you're not gonna see that. You're gonna see if this line on the wall is inconsistent. One nice thing about the weather logic, it does it does give you a nice snap line. Which snap line that tow rope. So that looks really good. I mean that's a nice straight line that tells us that our middle is just as good as our ends. You can see that that line is nice and consistently straight. So now we'll go ahead and start adding our framing. So what we've done is we've just taken um, some of our worst actually two buys and we ripped them down and just ripped them straight in half so even though they weren't great it's actually not a big deal because we're going to just manipulate them to be perfect on the snap line and then we're just going to go ahead and we got some ring shanks in the uh pads look great can you do me the honors of flush me up over there sure ah! So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our pass load. We've got uh, some ring shank nails, and Greg, could you do me a favor and uh, flush me up over there? Sure, dude. So we're just gonna push it to the line. This is what's giving us our ledger so our soffit can be secure. Sorry about the wind out here, guys. Uh, and then every two foot, we gotta come back with some perpendicular framing so that we can get a couple nails in that 16 inch soffit throughout the middle. You don't wanna just nail on the edges. Over time, all soffits will begin to sag and that'll help prevent that. Yikes. You know, I like pads load, but hopefully that can ride that fall. That was an 18 foot fall. Straight on its head. Okay, I think we're good. I must hit something. We'll get a little bit of tape on that guy. If you look under here, all of my purlins are two foot on center. So we went ahead and took some scrap blocks and all we're gonna do is we're gonna screw those right into our purlins, giving ourselves a place to add some nails in the center of that soffit. Now, 
I've worked with SmartSide. I bet it wouldn't probably do too much. It won't sag, um, but it still is a wood product over time, 16 inches. Um, you could get a little sag in that middle, and this is an easy way. We got all these scraps anyway. It won't take that long. So we're gonna run around the perimeter of this building and install a block every two feet. just painting always want to cover your nails you know we're not hacks out here dabbing it up there's dabbing the paint on the old nail heads you'll never see this from the ground hey <laughs> <laughs> all right so here on the end soffits this is always kind of a location right here where the eve and the end meet each other and how that is handled so i'll show you how we do it not necessarily how it you know has to be done some people build what's called like a bird box here and we don't really like that so we run the side soffits right to the edge of the wall and then our ends are going to come down and continue all the way out to the e fascia and then we're going to detail this little area with some trim i like it because it gives your corner a nice place to come all the way up um, and i just think it looks better i'm not a fan of this part right here on the soffit coming down and leveling off We've got the Milwaukee power supply. So that's the MX Fuel Power carry-on power supply and the Metabo Quiet Compressor. Pull the button out. So I'm sure my mic is gonna pick it up a little bit, but this thing is so super quiet, I love it. And what I like is, you know, obviously we've got it right here in the lift. So we're gonna be able to shoot all this on. Looks like we've got one bar missing, which I think is how we started the day so far. And yeah, this is, oh, look at that. We're gonna nail all this soffit on. I'll keep you guys updated. Now, one thing I gotta make sure is that we're out here, not going out past my end. Okay, now anytime you're doing LP products, just let your gun undershoot the nail just a little bit. You'd rather it have to be pounded in flush than have a nail that goes way through your material. Um, that's not a good thing. You would rather pound them flush. Promise me. Promise me? No. I promise you that's what you want to do. So turn your nail gun pressure down and pound them in flush. Okay, so up here at the peak, you'll notice we've got blocking on the peak, and that's so that both sides uh, have obviously a good, a good nailing place for them. Um, I don't really know the right way to do this. You could probably put a piece of trim through here. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and just butt the two pieces together, and then we'll end up putting a bead of black caulk right there. But I wasn't gonna miter the pieces because you don't really wanna go too tight with them anyway. So I'm gonna leave them just slightly gapped. Do your best, caulk the rest, am I right? Okay, so in full disclosure here, um, we are done with the front side wall. We just got the end wall done. And this side wall here is the one that Greg and I know is not going to be perfect. And what I mean by that is because if you guys remember when we were doing our trusses, putting on our overhangs, um, we, we started on the other side, made that as straight as possible with the string line. And then we came over to the side we're working on now and we actually um, put another string line out instead of having an exact 16 inch overhang. So we're going to have to measure each soffit um, 
to make sure that we don't cut them too big. We don't want them to be too tight, sticking out, but um, it's because each truss could have been just slightly smaller or bigger than the next one. And we took all that air out on the backside and uh, that's where you know nobody's gonna see it so that we could have the straightest possible fascia on the front side of the building. Some people might call us hacks, Greg, but I think that's actually a smart thing to do because we're not gonna get all new trusses and never are you gonna get trusses that are all perfect. So what, are the, what do you got here? Uh, I've got 16 on that and then these two are 15 and a half. Huh? 15 and a half? Yeah. <laughs> see now, that's funny because like if I were to turn, turn you guys around, so Greg is saying that right here, this measures 16 inches, but these first two trusses must have been a little bit bigger than the end truss. Now, nobody's gonna notice that. You're never ever going to see that, but what we need to do is we need to cut our soffit so that it fits there, because if we just cut it at 16, where these two trusses are, it would stick out past the fascia. So we'll cut it for the 15 and a half inch um, trusses and then over here on this end, it'll just have a bigger gap here at the wall, which gets covered with our siding and our trims. So really no big deal. Always think about how you make it look good. Not necessarily, um, you know, cut things as they should be because you never ever get perfect materials. You just have to do a good job as a carpenter making imperfect things look as good as possible. All right, so. This is not going anywhere. What I want to do is make sure when we go down there, it looks, it looks good from here to the end of that. On the bottom side. Well, if the bottom side's good, the top side's good, but yes. So what we've got is we've got this smart side fascia trim, which is, I mean, it's straight as an arrow. And so we're using it to ensure a nice straight fascia line. Now we got to make sure that we're at least or very close to the uh, the plane of the roof. We don't want to be up too high. You know, if it's up just a little bit, it'll be okay because we'll run our trims through. But the main thing is you want your eye to see this fascia board and it to look as perfectly straight as possible. Uh, I've told this a million times, but with post frame, we're eight foot on center. From this point here, where there's a truss tail, to this point here, there could be something, whether it's a bow or a crown in your lumber or a sag in your lumber, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty good. Nobody's gonna see it except for us at this line right here, but it's still our opportunity to make sure it's as straight looking as possible. Uh, and I think it's gonna look, I think it's gonna look pretty darn good. There you go. I just want to kind of lean back and... That look pretty good, dude. Yeah? Yes, it does look pretty good. Nice spacing. Maybe pull it down to here. So I like to go ahead and use my square and just check the dimensions and it kind of gives me a nice straight line. Not that you're ever going to see it, but more importantly, it'll tell me exactly where to put my nail so that I hit my sub fascia behind. I don't want to be too close up here because then it'll go into the roof sheathing and down here is our soffit and the overhang lip that's on the underside. Give me a cacao, Greg. <laughs> nice, dude. Take a look at this soffit fascia. This thing is looking like a million dollars. It's running really nice and straight. From the underside, you can barely see it, but I think you get the idea. It looks really nice, nice and straight.
kind of okay with that. Yeah, let's paint that. Angering really soaks it up. Yeah, really. So check it out guys so here's our miter and this is obviously important to have still your little bit of gap we're sitting really nice here in the center it's looking really good down this way and it's really good down that way so there's a little bit of sawdust on here we'll go ahead and take our little dabber make sure we dab the paint thank you Just like that. Don't what nails? Here. So Plumber has all of their underground pipes done. You can see everything sticking up. And they're gonna get started on setting the grade of all the finished rock grade for the foam for the radiant floor. And the electrician just showed up. He's gonna run a couple uh, he's gonna run a couple outlets one over here for where the like the sofa is that we can get some maybe some lights at the end tables or something and then maybe another outlet out here where the great room dining room table is going to be as well as you can obviously see all these pipes here which are where the island is the kitchen island and you got gas pipes and water lines uh, drain pipes vent pipes i don't know there's a pretty special vent that they had to do for the island and then we're going to start running all this foam. Had to borrow my Stabila rotary laser there, Joey. I did. Pretty high tech. It's one of the best. Just be nice to it. it cost me a lot of money. <laughs> We've got two inches of XPS insulation. Very common, this is an R10. This is gonna go down on top of the gravel and then all of the radiant tubes will get ran. There's gonna be three zones. We've got a zone for the garage, a zone for mainly like the rooms, which is the master bath, the master bedroom, the guest bath, the uh, mechanical room, laundry room, all that stuff. And then there'll be another zone that will be this area back here, the great room where the kitchen is, the living room. And uh, so there'll be three zones in here for the radiant heat. There will also be a mini split back in this corner of the garage where there'll be another room back there. And that will be kind of its own climate. And then there will be a forced air unit for supplemental heat, but mainly for air conditioning come summertime. So it's good to see all these underground things getting done because obviously you can't just run another box through a floor joist when there's concrete floors. So that's gonna get done. So hopefully in the next couple days, all this work's gonna get done and we can get the concrete contractor in here to do the floors. Now one of the details I wanna share with you guys is the shower detail. So something that I've been thinking about, something that if I were to do this for myself, I would want it done, is we're going to actually leave the showers unfinished so no concrete through that area we're gonna let the concrete contractor give us a nice level floor all the way around that shower we're gonna frame out the opening so that nothing is done on the inside at this moment once we build all of our walls the goal will be to come in put in the sloped pan so that there's a zero clearance we don't want any uh, curb or there's not going to be any shower pans that get dropped on top of the concrete so that'll be kind of cool I think in my mind anyway and our goal is to give the client what they want, which is no shower doors, no curtains, a just seamless walk-in entry into a shower where they can do their thing, all the water goes into the drain like it should, and then they can be on their way. So that's one of the details if you guys are interested, you know, 
obviously follow along and hopefully I can do justice on that. But the main thing is we got all this underground done. Hopefully it's all where it's supposed to be. And um, for us, Greg and I, we are gonna be starting on the roof probably tomorrow. So that's where we're at. We've got all of our soffit fascia done. We've got all of our exterior weather logic done. We've got all this underground done, ready for concrete. Um, so it's really coming along. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. I'm probably gonna end the video right here. So make sure if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Uh, would appreciate that. Hit a thumbs up if it's a, a video that you enjoyed. Uh, drop me some feedback down below in the comments if you have something for us. And uh, hopefully come back for the next video. This is a long way to go but we've come a long way so far and I'm really liking where it's at. So uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video.